Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Tuesday, February 23rd. As you look at the board behind me, you can see today we are going to learn about something called the Hero's Journey Outline. <clears throat> Yesterday, I introduced you to the Hero's Journey Diagram. Today, we're going to actually be diving deeper into that diagram, and we're going to be looking at an outline, which is really just a uh, brief, um, shortened version of the overall um, Hero's Journey book. So when Joseph Campbell went and he wrote about this pattern, remember, <clears throat> I told you yesterday, Joseph Campbell was a scholar who was um, studying books, he was studying literature, and he identified this pattern. Well, he went and he wrote an entire book all about the hero's journey. We're not going to go ahead and try to read the entire book right now. We're going to look at an outline today of the 10 different stages in the hero's journey, according to Joseph Campbell, and we're going to get a better understanding of what happens during each stage. Yesterday, you just got introduced to the names. So let's dive into the blog here. <clears throat> you can see today we will learn more about the hero's journey as we prepare to read Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Remember that <clears throat> learning about this thing called the hero's journey it's all in preparation of our analysis and our evaluation of Harry Potter. And as we read, we're going to be analyzing exactly how Harry fits this pattern. The Do Now asks you to write down tonight's homework in your agenda. The homework is to complete this notebook, page 41, and make sure that you upload a picture. <clears throat> the other part of the Do Now asks you to take out a yellow, an orange, and a green highlighter. There those colors are again. So if you have these three highlighters, please take them out now. You will also need something to write with, um, and you will need to go to your ELA folder. Here I am. Here's my ELA folder. I'm going to open up my ELA folder, take out my packet. <clears throat> All right, and the very next page in my packet you can see at the top it says Act 1, Separation, and then right here below it, this is the outline. So I'm going to take this page out, <clears throat> set it aside for a moment, take the rest of my packet that now looks like this, and here I'm going to put this into my folder, and I'm going to set my folder aside. Remember, it's very important that you take good care of your folder and your packet. Um, because I will not always be able to give you extra copies of things. <clears throat> okay, so now that we have this, we're going to take a look at our notes from yesterday. Yesterday, we learned about the hero's journey, and we learned these things right here. We learned that the hero's journey is a pattern of literature. It's a pattern of storytelling. It was first identified by this guy named Joseph Campbell, who was an American scholar studying books. The pattern describes a typical adventure of the character known as the hero. The hero goes out and achieves great deeds on behalf of a group. They never go out and do what they do for themselves. They do it for the betterment of a group of people. And we looked at many popular examples of some heroes that you might already know, like Luke Skywalker, Percy Jackson, Peter Parker, Katniss Everdeen, Beatrice Pryor, and of course, Harry Potter. These are all very popular heroes. Now, um, in class yesterday, I, um, in just our regular discussion, several people brought up the fact that this sounds like this character, or this sounds like this character. And so this is just a very short list of a few characters I thought that you might know. But I guarantee you, all of you have other characters um, in, in mind that fit this pattern, okay? And after we learned these things about the hero's journey, in our notes, we put down the hero's journey diagram. And we see in this diagram, it's most helpful at letting us see that there are three different acts. An act is just a phase. Um, so we can think of this as phase one, phase two, phase three, or act one, act two, act three. And we learned that each one of these acts has a name. So act one is separation, where our hero feels separated from the world around them. Act two is initiation and transformation, where our hero gets inducted or welcomed into a new group, and they go through a change. And then ultimately, act three is the return, where they will eventually have to return to the ordinary world, 
um, and basically they're going to save the world. So we looked at this diagram yesterday. We looked at the three different acts, and each act um, has a certain number of stages. Act 1 has four, and Act 2 and Act 3 each have three stages. So there's a total of ten stages here in this hero's journey. So today, as we prepare for um, our next notebook page, we're now going to take a closer look at each one of these acts. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my orange highlighter because this is the color we've been using for Act 1. <clears throat> and the first thing I'm going to do is I'll try to blow this up so you guys can see it real big, or at least as big as I can make it. All right, we see here we have Act 1, Separation. I'm going to color code this orange so it matches my diagram. All right, so here we have Act 1 separation, and then in class, all we're doing today is we're reading through each one of these, and we are color coding them to match the diagram. <clears throat> so here in Act 1, you can see, here's the first stage, and I'm going to color code it orange. Stage 1 is called The Ordinary World. This is where the hero feels out of place and thinks that they lead an ordinary, or a boring, ordinary life. All right. The hero feels out of place. That's the big part of this one. When we meet our hero, Harry, and when you meet any hero um, in any book or movie that you like to watch, you'll notice that the hero just doesn't seem to fit in. There's something that makes them different, something that makes them not quite fit in with the ordinary world around them. The second act, or the second act, the second um, stage of Act 1 is called The Call to Adventure. In this stage, some event calls the hero to act or to do something. All right, basically here, this is where our hero kind of has to make a choice. <clears throat> in Star Wars, Luke has to choose to go with Obi-Wan. Um, in the Lego movie, Emmett, um, he has to choose to go along with Wild Style so that he can um, save the, the planet. Um, in... In all of these hero movies, whether they're the superhero movies or just a uh, typical here literary hero's adventure like we have with Harry Potter, there is always a moment where our hero has to make a choice. All right. Um, in some versions of the hero's journey, you'll see that there's another stage that um, Joseph Campbell talks about here where the hero has a refusal of the call to adventure, where basically the hero has to doubt themselves and temporarily they have to refuse this call to adventure. And we actually do see that in the first book in the first movie. Hagrid comes to tell Harry that he's a wizard and that he's about to go to wizard school. Harry says, no, you, it can't be me. I'm just Harry. Um, and so he has this moment where he kind of refuses to believe this truth. Now, for him, it only lasts a moment, and he goes with Hagrid, and we know that he goes off to his first year at Hogwarts, all right? But here, this is an important point of every hero's journey story, and this is that call to adventure, where the hero has to receive this call um, and make a choice about whether or not they're going to go off um, on this adventure or not. Act 1, Stage 3 is called Entering the Unknown, and here... I am going to <clears throat> underline this or highlight this orange to match. In this stage, the hero enters a world they have never experienced before with its own rules that they must learn. Um, <clears throat> again, we see this um, in popular movies. We see this in popular books. Um, like if you think about Percy Jackson, um, there are some very popular movies out with him in it. Um, that were based off of the book series. And Percy Jackson, he is an ordinary boy living um, as a 7th grade student in New York City, I believe, when he learns that he's actually um, a demigod and he's the son of Poseidon. And he has to enter this whole new world of gods and demigods um, where he's got to learn a whole new set of rules that are different than the rules of the ordinary world that he has been living in. Um, and we're going to see that that same thing happens to Harry. 
Um, and with sequels, there's always an interesting um, point here that we have to make. Because here it says that the hero enters a world they have never experienced before. But we know that with books that have sequels, like the sequels to Percy Jackson and Harry Potter, Harry's not entering the wizarding world for the first time. Here, we're going to use a caret. And I'm going to put in the prefix re. The hero re-enters a world that they have, and it's not always that they've never experienced, but sometimes it's that they have little experience. Okay, that they have little experience with. Um, that has its own rules that they must learn. Alright, um... Harry does have some experience with the wizarding world. And again, with all the different kinds of sequels, whether you're going from Percy Jackson or Star Wars, um, once you get past the first book or the first uh, movie, the hero has already entered the world. So sometimes, like in Harry, Harry's case, he's re-entering the wizarding world. And he has little experience in the wizarding world compared to other um, young wizards his own age who've grown up in the wizarding world. Harry's only spent one year at Hogwarts, so he has very little experience compared to other uh, witches and wizards his own age. The last stage of Act 1 is called Supernatural Aid and Meeting with the Mentor. <clears throat> so this stage really kind of has two things going on. It's got this idea of our hero receiving some kind of supernatural aid, and there's also a point where our hero, um, kind of it's the source of the aid, is the meeting with the mentor. Um, those go together because the mentor is the one that gives them the aid. It gives them um, the, the help. Um, and here, this stage is defined. It says, heroes get started on their journey by a character who has mastered the laws of the outside world. In our case of the book, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Harry gets started on his journey in book one from Hagrid. Hagrid is the gamekeeper at Hogwarts, and he comes and he takes Harry into the wizarding world, a world that Hagrid has mastered. He knows all the rules, and now he's bringing Harry into that world. Um, later on, we also see that the word mentor really is just a word for teacher, <clears throat> and Harry has a lot of teachers at, Hog, uh, at Hogwarts, and we wouldn't call all of them, per se, his mentor, even though technically they are all of his mentors. If we look at the series as a whole, Hagrid, Hagrid is Harry's first mentor, but then throughout the series more and more, Hagrid transitions away from being his mentor, and Dumbledore kind of steps into the role as Harry has to learn um, more and more things about how to ultimately defeat Voldemort in the end. <clears throat> where the only person that's mastered that knowledge is Dumbledore. So it's Dumbledore who acts as Harry's mentor in the later books, whereas in the earlier books, you always see that it's Hagrid that uh, Harry goes to whenever he needs help. And that's really what this is saying. When our hero gets into trouble, who is there to help them? And we don't mean his friends. We mean someone who is above him in stature um, or in status. Harry is a... Six, uh, sixth grader, seventh grader here. So any of the students there, those wouldn't be but his more mentor. More often, it's someone like Hagrid and Dumbledore who will act as the mentor because they're the one that's going to be ultimately giving the help to our hero. All right, so that's the end of Act 1. Um, a little long-winded, but that's the end of that one. So now I'm going to change from orange, and I am going to change to green. All right, and the last thing that I um, want to make sure that we do is you heard me often talk here in Act 1, Stage 4, that heroes don't only get started on their journey by their character, but they also get help along their journey. And so we're going to add this word help right here, okay? Heroes get help on their journey by a character who has mastered um, the laws of the outside world. Okay, so Act 2, Initiation and Transformation. I have my green highlighter, so here I'm going to highlight this one, green. OK, 
Okay, and we went over these words. Initiation means to be welcomed into a new group, and transformation is to go through a change. So this one has three stages. Act 2, Stage 1 is called Allies and Helpers. In this stage, it says every hero needs a helper or a sidekick. Most heroes would fail miserably without their helpers. So this, guys, this is the stage which encompasses the friends. Okay, so Hagrid is a mentor. Dumbledore is a mentor because they're his teachers. Um, they're um, his elders. His allies and helpers are the people that he's actually in school with. So when we talk about characters like Hermione or Ron or Neville or um, Draco, you have to decide whether these are his allies and helpers or, in Draco's case and other characters' cases, whether or not they're antagonists um, to our protagonist. Okay, but this one is saying every hero needs help. And this is one where you'll see this stage woven throughout because um, Ron and Hermione are Harry's good friends. They are his allies and his helpers, but they don't just help him at one point. They'll help them at um, a number of times throughout his journey. So we kind of see this stage woven throughout all of Act 2. Um, so it's not just one moment, whereas the call to adventure here, that is one moment. We, there's the call to adventure, and then we're past it. With allies and helpers, you see how allies and helpers are going to help our hero throughout the entire story. Act 2, Stage 2 is called The Road of Trials. <clears throat> the Road of Trials is a series of tests the person must undergo. The hero progresses through this series of tests or a set of obstacles that make them stronger, preparing them for the final showdown. If you remember about the plot line, the plot line has a part which is called the rising action. This road of trials is just like the rising action. This is where our hero is constantly going through more and more challenges or obstacles that are set before them, each one getting harder and harder and more and more intense until they get up to the final showdown. You can think of it like a video game where each stage gets harder and harder and harder until you have to beat the final boss. That's what this Road of Trials is. When you're playing a video game, you're on the Road of Trials. You're developing your skills along the way as you develop, the, as you beat each level. And ultimately, you're going to have to use all those skills to beat the final boss. And that's what this Road of Trials is just like. Any literary hero... Again, whether it's Luke Skywalker or Katniss Everdeen or Emmett from the Lego movie, they go through a road of trials. And this is often where we see the allies and helpers come in because the allies and helpers will help our hero as they go through this road of trials. The last stage of Act 2 is called the Supreme Ordeal. And this is very much like the climax in the plot line. This is the final battle. Once this obstacle is overcome, the worst has passed, and the quest, <clears throat> while not officially over, has succeeded. The Supreme Ordeal, that again, it's like the final boss. Think about any um, video game you've played that has a final boss and you beat them. That is the Supreme Ordeal. Um, think about any superhero movie. When the superheroes have saved the planet or they've defeated the bad guy or the villain... That's the supreme ordeal. We all know that at the end of the Rocky movies, there's that big final boxing match. That's the supreme ordeal. It's just like the climax. It's the most intense part of the story for our hero. It is the final battle. It's the most challenging thing that they have to overcome. That happens in Act 2, Stage so, 3. So now that we're through Act 2, Stage 3, we're on to our last act, which is Act 3. And that's called The Return. And we're going to color code this yellow. You'll see in this act there are also three stages. Act 3, stage 1 is called the Magic Flight. In this stage, this is the journey home. <clears throat> the majority of the adventure has passed, but that doesn't mean that the return journey will be easy. Sometimes there is a chase or a but This battle. is the journey home. It's called the Magic Flight. And in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, our hero, um, he goes through this stage almost twice. 
But once he goes through it, quite literally, he literally has a magic flight that he goes on um, in the book. So I, I always like talking about this stage with you guys when we read um, Harry Potter. Act 3, stage 2 is called Confronting the Father. And as I read here, in this step, the hero must confront whatever holds the ultimate power in his or her life. It's called confronting the father, and really, I think it could be called confronting the authority figure. Um, but a good spot where we actually see a character confront the father um, is, one, in Star Wars, when at the end of Empire Strikes Back, Luke is literally confronted with that famous quote about, um, I am your father. And so Luke is literally has to confront his father. We also see it in the Lego movie when we learn that Emmett is just simply being played with by the son, we see the son have to confront his father, who his father wants all of his Legos to be glued together and be used as a display model instead of being played with, when the son in that movie really just wants to play with the Legos. And so we see him actually have to, once again, confront his father. In a lot of these hero movies, though, as well, we know that um, our hero might have a father that is um, passed away, like in Harry's case. Harry doesn't have a father that's alive, so he doesn't have a father to confront. And in a lot of these movies, it's not the father that the hero confronts, but it's confronting the authority figure. And in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, we do see a moment where Harry confronts someone um, about... Um, his thoughts and his beliefs. And when we confront the father, it's important to note that this is a time when our hero is really confronting the father or confronting the authority figure about an internal conflict. Remember in Unit 1, we learned about internal and external conflicts. Um, the external conflict is one in the supreme ordeal. But there are still internal conflicts that are going on. And it's at this point where we often see the story deal with those internal conflicts when our hero confronts the authority figure. And we see that happen in Harry Potter, where Harry has some very serious internal conflicts that are going on within him. And they only go away in this stage here when Harry confronts um, the authority figure about these thoughts and worries. The last stage, Act 3, Stage 3, is called Master of Two Worlds slash restoring the world we know especially in superhero movies the goal always seems to be you know save the world um superman spider-man it doesn't matter we're always trying to save the world the avengers okay save the world or the universe okay this stage says success on the hero's quest is life changing often the hero returns with an object or a personal ability that allows them to save their world um, and again, we can think about Luke Skywalker with the Force and his lightsaber. Um, you can think about superhero movies who develop their skills like Spider-Man or any of the Avengers. <clears throat> All right, They've got special abilities now that allow them to continually save the world. And their success in the supernatural world allows them to return and be heroes in their own world. And so basically this world in Act 1, the one where we're feeling so separated from, at the end of the story, okay, our hero has been able to master two worlds. Those are the two worlds we're talking about. You know, in Harry's case, we're talking about the ordinary world and then the wizard world. Um, and in other characters within different books and different series, there's, there's always two different... Um, worlds that the hero basically is able to master um, and often again it's it's the ordinary world and it, perhaps it's some kind of a magical world or a world of superpowers super villains again we see that a lot with the superhero movies all right so this is the hero's journey outline now that we've read and we've talked about each part the last thing that you need to do is we are going to cut this out so you are going to need to cut out the margins. And then in our notebook, in our notebook, 
we are going to, at the very top, title this The Hero's Journey. This is page 41 in our notebook. And the date that we are doing this is February 23rd. So I will now add my date. All right, and you can see now I have my date, I have my title and my page number, and I have glued in my hero's journey outline. Make sure that you upload a picture of this on Google Classroom so I can see that you've done all of your highlighting and that you have made your um, additions that we did here up in Act 1. Um, and you guys are going to see as we read Harry Potter how this page and this page, they clearly go together and they act as the foundation for our analysis. So throughout the entire story as we're reading Harry Potter, we're going to be looking for all the ways that Harry doesn't fit in with the ordinary world, how he feels out of place, how he thinks he leads a boring life, and how Harry gets a call to adventure where he has to make a choice to act and do something. <clears throat> how Harry has to enter a world that he has little experience with, how he's going to get help from his mentors, he's going to have help from his allies and his helpers, he's going to have to face this road of trials. There is a supreme ordeal that awaits him, in the Chamber of Secrets, how he goes through a magic flight, how he has to confront the authority figure, and how he ultimately masters and saves the world. All right, and we're going to be able to use this information here along with our readings, and we're going to be able to analyze to see how Harry does indeed fit this pattern. So with that said, guys, tomorrow um, is Wednesday, so if you need help, make sure that you guys get online for help. On Thursday of this week, we are actually going to be taking some notes on note-taking strategies. One of the things that kids like about Unit 3 is that um, I'm not always giving you a graphic organizer or telling you what kind of notes you get to have to take. Um, I'm going to be presenting you guys with a bunch of different note-taking strategies where you guys yourselves will be able to choose what note-taking strategy you want to use. So you'll be able to do what works best for you. You won't have a teacher telling you what you have to do. You guys are going to have some power and some authority to make decisions for yourselves regarding the notes that you take while we read Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. <clears throat> so, guys, have a great evening, and I will see you on...